Hello, this is Victor and this video I want to do a review of the Quinsom Slaughter supplement for the Chaos Space Marine Codex. So as all the supplements, it has a lot of fluff. So this one has about 100 pages of fluff. And then there are the rules after that. And here I would like to talk a little bit about the rules and what is this adding to the Chaos Space Marine. So the first rule is that all, if you use this supplement, all your units have fear special rule. Okay, then the next change is that the possess will, will be troop instead of elite. And on top of that, the mutations of the possess are changing compared to the Codex Space Marine and the table is going to be different. So in if you take possess in and you use a, a crimson slaughter, then the mutations you have you roll a d3. The um, you have to roll this at the beginning of each controlling player's turn, and then when you roll uh, a d3, you you can have the next abilities. So if you roll a one. You have a spirit bacon, bacon, and the unit and any vehicle they are embarked on gains the rolled special rule. If you roll a two, then they have the beast form and they have they change from infantry to beast type of unit. And if you roll a three, then you have a three plus invulnerable save instead of the five plus. Then, if you take a chosen um, unit, you can um, you can upgrade your champion to be Dvaznit Ravager, and that means that your champion will have preferred enemy special rule, the unit uh, of the champion and the champion. But if the champion is dead, the the preferred unit, uh, the preferred enemy, is also lost. And then the other thing is that only corn berserkers, plague marines, and noise marines can take veterans of the long war special rule, and all the other units cannot take that. As in previous supplements, the release have to be taken from this supplement if you are using this supplement, so you cannot take relics from the Chaos Space Marine Codex. And they can be allied with Chaos Space Marine Codex and Detachment as Battle Brothers and vice versa. And then they also, as, as usual, they have their own, their own Warlord Trades table that I will, I will check just right now. So the Warlord Trades is if you roll a 1, your Warlord and the unit that is joined have hit rate a special rule and, ho ho and however when striking enemy units chosen from Codex Dark Angels your Warlord and any unit that joins can reroll miss in every close combat so you have hatred and if you fight against um, Dark Angels you have hatred all the turns so you reroll always so and on a 2 you have Malstorm of torment and then all enemy units within 12 inches of the warlords suffers minus one leadership penalty furthermore all enemy units within 12 of your warlord suffers minus two leadership when they uh, penalty when they have to check for fear then a three is madinet rage the warlord has the Rage and Furious Charge special rule. However, if the Warlord or any model of the Crimson Slaughter unit he joins is within 12 inches of an enemy model at the beginning of the shooting phase, he cannot shoot, must attempt to charge in the in, in the assault. Okay? And uh, the number four is your warlord and the unit he joins 
has Crusader Special Rule, 5. The enemy models in base contact with the Warlord each take a DC. Uh, D, uh, sorry. Enemy models in base contact with the Warlord um, have to take D6 Strength 3 AP uh, slash hits at initiative step 10. So this means that you are hitting all the models in contact with Strength 3. And the last one, 6, the Warlord has shrouded a special rule. So I think all the Warlord traits in that supplement are quite good. I are adding something to your army and most of them will be useful. I don't see any that will be useless like like can happen with other warlord traits. So I think it's quite an, a good table. It's boosting your warlord and the unit of your warlord and will always be useful. So you will always have something that can be used in the battle. And now let's make a look to the relics of the codex. So the first relic is uh, Crucius of the Dark Covenant. It's 30 points and the Crucius of the Dark Covenant can only be taken by a Dark Apostle and replaces the um, Power Mole. And it's giving plus 2 to the strength, AP4, melee, concussive and warp medium. And warp medium is giving that all friendly Quinsome slaughter units within 6 inches of the barrier have Zealot Special Rule. So it's making your unit uh, or your Quinsom slaughter units next to him pretty um, dangerous in close combat. So the next one is Blade of the Drelonless. Can, be, can only be taken by the Warlord itself. Um, it's a strength user, AP3, melee, and soul siphon. And so each time you, you make a, uh, you kill somebody with your shot, you have to note it down, and then you have to compare on the next table. So if you have killed more of one enemy, you receive plus one to strength. If you kill three, you will have AP2. If you kill 5, you will have another additional plus 1, so it's going to be plus 2 and AP2. And then if you kill 10 models, that I think is quite difficult in a, in a normal game, then you will have instant death, plus 2 to the strength and AP2. So this is a weapon that is becoming stronger and stronger. I think it's nice to have the plus 1. It's quite, it can be quite easy to have the AP2. But uh, most of the cases, I don't see that it's very useful. Because if you have AP2, it's because you kill people with armor 3. If you are fighting people with armor 2, it's going to be difficult that you you will receive the AP2. So it's quite a tricky weapon, can be very powerful, but once it's very powerful, you almost kill 5, un five enemies with your boss. I, I guess if you are in a unit with Chosen, or a unit with Possess, or any other unit, uh, if you if you both have kill five, you, the only, the unit have kill a lot more. So it's a curious weapon. I don't see is is a great weapon for competitive gaming. Then the next one is the is Lothered horns. So the beer of the Lothered horns has Furious charge, hammer of wrath, and rage special rule. So this is very good if you want to have. Uh, a close combat, a bonus for your close combat boss or for your close combat um, hero. Then you have the Ballstar of Manon. The Cow Sorcerer is only for Cow Sorcerer. And the beer of the Ballstar Manon can choose to generate power from Divination, what is very nice to have from Divination, and rerolls Filet Secret Checks uh, Test. So this is very good because with the high uh, leadership, this is almost guaranteeing that you will have your power going out. However, however, neither he uh, and not his, uh, any unit he's joining can benefit any modifiers to the Night of Witch um, with the bear. So it's 25 points to have Divination in Chaos plus the roll uh, Filet uh, Psychic Checks. 
and you cannot do the night the witch. I see the negative point is not that bad, but I don't think also benefit depending if you want to use divination. Divination with um, presence is quite powerful and can be you can have quite nice combinations in in chaos. Then next one is the demon heart. So might not be taken by a demon prince and it's just a plus two armor save. So it's and it will give it will not die a special rule. So if you want to make your lord um, very resilient, very resistant, you can give this is plus two armor save and it will not die a special rule. But it's not in is it can be kill anyway by instant death so yeah it can be very powerful depending who you are fighting next one prophet of the voices and the bear has the demon uh, fearless and fleet a special rule furthermore the bearder has the slave of the voices a special rule so and can only join units of possessed chosen uh for machines some um, is louder attachment. So this means that your warlord or your hero is transformed into a possess. This is why you have demon, fearless, and fleet. And then you have also the mutations that uh, of the possess from this book. So you can transform your your warlord into a possess. And that's all for for the um, relics on this book. So the next will be the next things that this book also have is um, as as all the other supplements is the cities of death stratagems and then also the you have the how it's called is the planet strike stratagems and then at the end of the book you have a lot. Uh, you have some of um, missions, special missions for this book. So you have, I think it's about nine missions that are different from the rule book. So there is also uh, a good addition and to give a lot of variety to your games by having, I'm counting now, it's four, six, seven, I think it's about nine, nine different missions that you, you add to your collection of missions. So it can also be very nice to make a campaign and it's mainly missions to fight against Dark Angels and it's like an extension for me, it's like an extension of the Dark Vengeance set where you have the Chaos fighting and the Dark Angels. So overall, I think it's quite a nice book, a lot of fluff, the rules are quite solid, you can have some, some nice build-ups. The only problem is that if you are based on and a standard Chaos Space Marines, you have the same problem as the as the modern codex that your Chaos Space Marines are not fearless and can run out of the combat. But if you start using possess that and, and start using some other elite troops, so this can give a, a, a good a good addition. So I think using possess offline combined with cultists can be also quite nice build up and can give some variety to the game. So that's all for the review of this codex. I think have been, uh, I hope it can be useful for you. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, if you like, please subscribe or like it. And see you again later. Bye.